My name's Chris. And I'm Christy. This is the Washing Up Podcast and it's Cookie Week. It is indeed. Uh, other places might call it Biscuit Week. But the Americans get very confused. Yes. Um, that was what I put on the on the caption, um, mm-hmm. on, on the Instagram caption. I put a thing where I said, you know, it's it's Cookie Week or to the rest of the Commonwealth, mm-hmm. Biscuit Week. I mean, I guess they have to call it Cookie Week, otherwise some poor monsters on Sesame Street might go hungry. Yeah, look, I mean, there's a bunch of jokes <laughs> There's no there. Biscuit Monster. It's also very hard for me to pick a song, because usually Cookie Week, I play mm-hmm. C is for Cookie over the back of the Instagram story. Yeah. And it's very hard, because it's very hard to find Biscuit, story, biscuit songs. I'm sh- there's going to be a niche area for Biscuit songs. And we're going to find it. There's going and people to, are going to come up. Someone, okay. And they're all put, going to, I know what we need to do. We need to get the, you know, the, I did it off with a cookie. The I did cookie. it off with a cookie? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like now, to, now there, are, there is going to be someone out there who's a wrestling fan who's going to go, ah, biscuits and gravy, the Festus wrestling entry. No, that's biscuits as in the scone biscuits. So it doesn't count. Um, are they even scones? Like I am just No, assuming. they're not. They're, yeah, all, they're, yeah. a, they're a mixture hybrid weird thing. Okay. So anyway. It is. Cookie. I do want to try them. I oh, don't we all. It is Cookie Week and some grits. Uh, yes, it is Cookie Week and um, bacon. Like I've had bacon, <laughs> but I assume that will just. I like that. Oh, and bacon. I mean, I've had bacon, but I just want to. No, because there's Canadian bacon. Yes, and and then the it's Americans have like streaky bacon, which we get kind yeah. of here in in Australia, but we're more got the British. Um, middle bacon, middle bacon quality because you can you can crisp it properly. Anyway, um, <laughs> streaky bacon's quite good. Yeah, streaky bacon's fine. So anyway, um, before we get into it, I want to just quickly run through the drinking game card because you know a drinking. lot of people, a lot of people are doing that. A lot of people are playing. Um, a lot of people are making their own. It's out on the streets. A lot of people are making their own. CBC, for example. Anyway. <laughs> But uh, look, I don't like to rubbish the the product of the fine people at CBC. No, no, it's it's fine. It's I think fine. Just... It's great. But one word, guys, really one word cues. Like you Come wrote on. drama this week. Like we didn't know that Alan was going to use that word in the first three sentences. Drama. Um, <laughs> like I feel like they they can they can choose how boozy that the the people. Well, they, they just call this. They just call this bingo too. Oh, bingo! Nowhere but, near as fun. No, but the thing is, right with bingo. You have to then, everyone has to have a different card. Otherwise, you're all playing the same bingo exactly. card. Exactly. Then you all so you're all going to say bingo at the same time. Like, that's why the drinking game is far more fun. Because we're all finding out together. Yes. And legitimately, we're finding out. This is all completely before anything is watched, the drinking game has is is come up with. Yes. It's just literally because we've been watching this for so long, we can usually pick it. Mm-hmm. So, with that in mind, Baker watches an oven intensely. Well, I deliberately Good. put that one in there. We needed a hit. Yeah, it's going to happen this week. Baker hasn't heard of the technical. Well, when we got to the technical, we realised, yeah, you might be in trouble with that one too. <laughs> um, th- that's the way the cookie crumbles. They avoided it. Because <gasps> we, we're trying to be more specific. Yeah, know, we, like... we, we want we want to earn our victories. Mm. You know, I could have just said bakes, you know, bakes cookie. And I kind of did with, <laughs> I kind of just did with, uh, when, I, when I mentioned macarons. Is in the pavilion. Yeah. Uses an oven. Wearing an apron. Uses a stand mixer. Wearing an apron. <laughs> um, Bruno and Kyla appear. <laughs> so, Alan's wearing a hat. So macarons. And looks fabulous. Macarons was the one I just put on a single bake because mm-hmm. I figured someone would. I didn't think that two people would. Um, we'll talk about that later. Macho was back on the game card. We didn't have a hit. We had a close run thing. We'll talk about that when we get to the showstopper. Okay, now I know what we need to do. We now need to be specifying what birds they're going to show. Like, that would be cool. We'll come to that for in a minute. Tri- we'll come a- to that in the intro. Okay, so, for a triple hit though. Okay, um, Alan and Anne are forage leftovers. They didn't do that again this week. There weren't any leftovers of the technical. Mm. Um, booze in a bake. That existed. That mm-hmm. happened. Yes. We will talk about Campari, or or shall we say, um, Italian bitters. Um, <laughs> baker helps another baker. That happened. And this is my week, Andrew. Mm-hmm. Andrew. 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 Don't. I'll aim for it to be my week. Oh, it was careful, <laughs> Icarus. We, we saw the, how that panned out. Oh, the baking gods just let him off. That was a yeah. warning. <laughs> All right, so the introduction. Now, mm. it was the following the Blue Jay joke, um, yes. which was birds slash the Toronto Blue Jays. <laughs> I love the my, Bo- my Boy Vladdy reference there um, by, by um, Anne. Yes. Um, for the baseball fans out there. Mm-hmm. And then the weird... 
Yeah, Bruno's I'm giggling cologne. as if I know. Like, I knew the Blue Jays were a thing. Yeah, Vladimir Guerrero, anyway. Birds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then it was about Bruno's cologne, followed by one of my favourite images now of any series, mm-hmm. which is Bruno, biscuit in hand, <laughs> leaning around from behind a tree and taking a sneaky bite and then just looking at the camera like, hey. I and now they... want someone with some digital wizardry skills to, to get that, cut him out. And you know, much like they've got those people that are like falling downstairs or whatever, yes. and they just cut them out and pop them into like shooting across space. Yeah, and, can we please get know. some people out there taking a gif of Bruno leaning from around the tree with a biscuit and doing all sorts of things with him? <laughs> you know, and, there he is and at the Great UN. Canadian Baking Show. I'm looking at you in particular. You can mm, do this. You, can, you own the footage. Do it. You do it. All right. So the signature, the signature this week was put him out a Blue Jays game. Put him somebody, writing. Put him looking at Blue Jays. Somebody needs to be. Anyway, <laughs> they they went they they made it to the to the playoffs this year and then immediately vanished from the playoffs. It was very fast. <laughs> embroidery cookies. Yep. Um. So they had two hours to make twelve embroidery cookies. Now we've had iced cookies before. We've had um, fondant cookies. We're in the last mm. series of Australian. I think we have had something very similar to this before, but it's always fun to see what people come up with. Oh, look, I th- me personally, I love this type of um, decoration. I yeah. think it's so pretty and I loved everyone's takes on it and I loved how some people had some flooding ice icing. I prefer you know, some, this. Some just put some embroidery on a nude bake. I it was pref- like, it's like the end of a burlesque <laughs> routine. Just a little I, bit of I prefer. Icing. I prefer this to the fondant cookies because I'm not mm-hmm. a big fan of fondant. So yeah. Um, so Renier referred to cookies mm. as his origin story. Ooh. Now I'm imagining Renier's Marvel character, Cookie Man. Oh yeah. wait. No, no, no. <laughs> We're infringing on copyright there. We're infringing on copyright. Um, you see, I, I mean, I think that's an interesting concept, though, this idea of um, mm-hmm. the origin story he being was... a particular type of bake. Because imagine, like, you know, you, you want to meet the, the, the person who, like, you know, their origin story is a religious, for example. Because, like, yeah. you know, that's mental. And that's a really <laughs> tricky one. But, you know, from the from the... Tough streets of playing b ball under the part under, under, under the overpass. Uh, under the underpass, that's it. Under the underpass? Under, under the, the overpass. Under the, under, the under the overpass. Under the overpass. Before offering around the cookies. There was like this shooting like star that landed and blew up a bakery and infused a biscuit and like it just soared across the darkened alley where he was wandering I'd, home. I'd like to think it's a bit like the opening of Xanadu, but with plot. Um, no, that completely spoils Xanadu. <laughs> what are you talking about? Look, if, if if the whole point of Kira in Xanadu <laughs> was to make him a baker, <laughs> it would okay. have at least carried the story somewhere. I know. Look, we don't need so the Ren- guy who Ren- wasn't Ren- because yeah. they couldn't afford Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> and, and, and because um, Andy Gibb had unfortunately passed away. So, <laughs> get me. Got Andy Gibb? He's dead. Get me his non-union equivalent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, like, Ranier's origin story has a lot more mythology to it mm. than, again, things like the opening of, of Xanadu. So, well done. Yes. Um, now, like, they come back to... to so like, it's him and his friends playing basketball in a mural. So, like, refers to himself as a cookie monster. Mm. Also talks about the fact that it's all about art, which is his other favourite thing. We'll come, mm. come to his art stuff in a minute, but I do like the idea of the cookie monster being into art. I mean, mm. he'd be a great art critic. Yes, I, I, I'm sure they'll, they'll do that on Sesame Street at some point, you know, because they, they like to touch on all things. They really do. And, you know, encouraging kids to critique art. Just Because remember, he did Masterpiece Theatre, didn't he? That Masterpiece Theatre, yes. Masterpiece Theatre. It's only a step away from um, Sunday Arts can I just on say, the ABC with can Cookie I, Monster. Can I just say that I think that, that television drama mm. peaked yeah. at Masterpiece Theatre. <laughs> didn't it all, like... I, f- I feel that, like, everyone these days, when you see those memes where it's kind of like, oh, name a movie where every character is exchanged for a Muppet except for one, and you've got to name it. I'm like, no, 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 no. We've been there and done this. It's a proven formula. Let's just get cracking. Yeah, exactly. Like, but, you know, <laughs> now all the artists are on strike, right? Get the ones who cross the picket lines and Muppets. <laughs> But I love, I, I love the idea, like, this is, this is the thing that... Or Monster- alternatively, just do the more as indie films. Yeah. Like, you know? Monsterpiece Theatre is the height 
absolute height. Um, and, and like musicals sort of peaked with Prairie Dawn. You know, welcome, oh, welcome, welcome to our little play. I don't see that on Broadway anywhere. Do you? No, I don't. And also reality TV um, <laughs> peaked with the bugs in the... Yes. <laughs> were they the Tweedlebugs? I can't remember. But the bugs in the little box where the worm would go. And yes, with Smiley, Smiley the Worm and stuff like that. That, yeah. that did indeed peak with that. And of course, the, the live-in story of Bert and Ernie, which was very much Big Brother before Big Brother. Oh, absolutely. Um, Bert and, and Ernie were Big Brother before Big Brother. And Will and Grace before Will and Grace. Exactly, yeah, Will and Grace before... Also, by the way, don't cross picket lines, you know, Union yeah, Strong. Yeah. Anyway, um, Bruno called the challenge a test of patience and skill. And we didn't get to really see that until the second half when everyone suddenly went, oh shit, I've got to pipe all of these cookies. Yeah. At which point the, sh- the, the pavilion got very quiet very fast. <laughs> yeah. And a so lot everyone, of people stressed. Everyone got past the, um, what's it called? The, oh, what, the, the multiple choice in the test and had, started to have to actually think yeah, they about think their answers. Yeah. Um, so Andrew was doing an agroni. Yeah. Now... This was inspired that by... It sounds like a skateboard thing. <laughs> now, the, the Negroni yeah, cookie was... Yeah, ins- go from a 360 pipe thing to... Into a Negroni. Negroni. <laughs> so, so it was either inspired by his honeymoon mm. or America's sweetheart, friend of the podcast, Aaron. Um, oh, column A, from, column B. From, you know, previous seasons of The Great Australian Bake Off. Um, <laughs> and I, I did, when this happened, I did, I did message Aaron before he got to watch it and went... You're going to like one of these bakes. And the next thing I got back was Negroni cookie. <laughs> um, so peppery orange sugar cookies. And mm. the jar said yes. Campari. Mm. The jar actually had a label that said Campari. But that can be. But when we got to the, the drawing, because of yeah. course they don't use brand names. Yes. It was just Italian bitters icing. Yeah, so they can sell it anywhere they like. Exactly. And the Italian viewers who are not fans of Campari and who much prefer their rivals, Campnori. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. You don't know. I really uh, don't. So even, the, yeah, so like Kyla was worried about it being too bitter because obviously mm-hmm. it's bitters. Um, but also there was the arrival of pink peppercorns. Ooh, very... And I could hear Sandra from the last series of The Great Australian Bake Off, yeah. our Canadian our Canadian expat, mm-hmm. her ears pricking up and going, do I hear pink peppercorns? Because <laughs> they used them in one of the technicals in Australia this year, and, yeah. and Sandra was talking about all these people don't know what to do with pink peppercorns. I remember when they were the height of cuisine. Oh, yes. They, um, they were fancy as, you know, you had the pink peppercorns way before you got your pink rock salt. Oh, God, yeah. You, Pink Himalayan salt hadn't even been heard of. When <coughs> maybe so, you just dye something pink and sell it as something new. There we go. Pink so, sugar, <laughs> derived from sugar canes that have been farted on by unicorns. That's farted on by. Okay, okay. Niv. Now Niv. <laughs> Niv. Notice how I'm just going no. no. Um, now Niv was hoping to avoid her one tasting like potpourri, which is always what you want to set out for. I find mm-hmm. as you know. Your solid basis of what you're doing is don't want potpourri. No. Um, so cookie tapestry, yes. hibiscus rose hip cookies with pomegranate icing. To be fair, mm-hmm. she did kind of run the risk of it tasting like potpourri by using hibiscus rose hip cookies and then pomegranate icing. It mm. does push you in that direction a yes. little bit. Um, I think she saved herself by not serving it in a bowl. That looked like just little chips of wood. Yeah, with like a, a sort of mesh thing over yeah. it and a bit of a bit of bow. Um, <laughs> now she did point out that obviously her background is Indian, and India is one of the largest producers of rugs, and her husband is Persian background, and Persia is second. So it combined her culture with her husband by making this rug. So um, I assume that they're um they're Jasmine and um Aladdining <laughs> all over the place <laughs> when they're at home. There's a whole new world. Every, um, every time. Like, they walk past a rug in their home. They have to, like, recreate at least one verse of a whole new world. Also, is it a cultural thing that no rug place ever sells their rugs at full price? Yeah, like, in is Australia. It culture, in Australia, yeah. So, in Australia, every rug shop yes. is either closing down yes, or has a, a shipping error mm. where yeah. they claim that they got given too many rugs and they have to sell them cheap. Yes. Now, obviously, the correct answer for the shipping error is ring the stockers and just go... <laughs> what? 
I didn't order these rugs. Yeah, what would you like me to do with them? Like, can I return them? But is this a Canadian thing? Can you let us know? Like, is, is it everywhere? Like, are, are we just, you know, are rug makers just balmy bats just going... <laughs> balmy bats! They just don't know. Well, better than Shane bats. Um, That's a what we do in the Shadows reference. They're, and they're just, like, fucking up orders, left, right, front and centre. Like, these rug makers are hardworking... And after they've done their tapestry, they just shit at the paperwork. <laughs> just like, I can't... If we go back through the history of rugs, yeah, are we going to find anyone that just sold them for the right quantity and the right price? Yeah, like, why Why are we in such a... Like, is this, is this how we know we're in, like, you know, the end of capitalism? Is by the <laughs> It started with the rugs. They were the, um... What's it called? The, the um... Not thermometer. What do they call it? The, there's a thing. Help me out here. Which thing? The, Barometer? The litmus test. Litmus they're, the, test. Li, they're the capitalist litmus test. <laughs> you might need to edit that bit, actually, because that was a long me not remembering. No, but what what I would like to know, is there a historical text with the rug equivalent of El Nasir? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Just like El Nasir's cousin, um, Bal Nasir. <laughs> Is just going up to the rug supplier. Going, anyway, yeah. Let's move on. We get, your copper before, needs to be better quality. Before we get down the honest here path. Um, now, Candace started to roll hers out, and they sort of broke up. So you had to re-roll it, and they said, you know, Anne said to her, "Do you do this by how do you do it by feel?" She goes, "I do it by feel, and then I pray." <laughs> um, lemon basil cookies with ginger bitters icing is what yeah. she was going with. Mm-hmm. Now, Camilla referred to her cookies as slightly rustic, but then was quick and went, that's a feature though. Yes. <laughs> Which is, again, very Bake Off of you, well done. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll come back to Camilla in a minute because we go to Kathy because Kathy had to talk about her raucous tea parties. Whoa, Kathy, you and the quilters getting on down. I want to go to one of these quilting parties. Yeah. I love the way she said we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna get a tent, a, do a tented fancy party. Mm-hmm. With like you know everyone in dresses and stuff, and Anne's like, "Can I come? It sounds fancy." And they're like, "Of course you can." And I, I love the idea of a wild quilters party. Yes, you know what they do? They go and get a a special talk speaker from the historical society. Someone say that's dressed up like Benjamin Franklin, <laughs> showing his well turned out calves as as they're quilting away and getting a bit high on all that. The office fans right now are loving it. <laughs> <I know>. um, <laughs> On all that tea tannin. <laughs> now, Kathy then talks about the fact that she's making Earl Grey cookies with a lemon icing. Mm-hmm. Um, Kyla looks at her and goes, you know, there's a time constraint here, right? Because she's making teacups and teapots. Yeah. And we had the teacups in Australian this year, didn't we? We did, but we had no teapots. That's no, just crazy we had, No, we had teacups and we had tea bags. That was... Oh, yes, that's right. Exactly. So and no t-shirts. No, it was is... Natalie doing that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Heather points out that because she went with black cookies, it was very hard to tell how baked they were in the oven. Yeah. Which was not thought through. As she said, I'm now questioning all my life choices. <laughs> um, yeah. Rainier talks about the fact that he didn't like royal icing. Um, I'm you... assuming he's very much a Republican. <laughs> and then sesame and tahini cookies and geranium icing shaped like peacocks. Mm. So they got the colour there, obviously, which is really vibrant. Um, and the use of tahini again, sesame and tahini, great flavours. Yeah, Love nice little flavors. umami, nutty hit. Um, now, Camilla was making hibiscus ice. It was very pink. <laughs> now, this is because she was going cranberry and lime cookies, and it was inspired by the, the, the cumbia. Which the cranberries. Is, no, the cumbia, which is Colombia's uh, national dance. And she talked so about the Dolores fact... Dolores Reardon. No, not Dolores Reardon, no. <laughs> okay. And then she was ta- Then she talked about the fact that it's the it's the national dance of Colombia. Yeah. We're all made to do oh, it at school. It's, oh, my God. Camille, we, we empathise with you. Here in Australia, we have to do bush dancing when we're in high school. I would argue that there are... Or primary school. I would, ar- I would argue that there are two national dances in Australia. Yeah. I would say the first one is... Some form Not of... Bush of city well, I was going well, to get there. Mm-hmm. So the first one is, I would suggest, the heel and toe. Oh, I know. So literally the instructions are heel and toe, heel and toe, slide, 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 slide. Heel and toe, heel and toe, slide, 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 slide. Right hand clap, 
left hand it. clap, both hand it. clap, and round Round's you go. go. And that's or it. on your knees, depending oh, that's on what a, you're doing. That's a weird version. Yeah. Anyway. Or do si do. The other one is the nut bush, which we were staggered to find out when Tina Turner died. <laughs> the only country. The only country on earth. That, that does, does the, the dance, nut. the nut bush to the nut. Tina Turner's dancers never didn't even do it on so, stage. It's an Australian thing. So look it up on YouTube. But that said, right, bush dancing is essentially like country it's folk dancing. dancing. Yeah. It's it's square dancing. It's more British kind of country dances. But we just called it bush dancing. And you and the, the point of that was because boys and girls necessarily wouldn't mingle at primary schools. So you stood them in lines opposite each other, but not really touching. So it was the closest a lot of the time they'd get to like talking to somebody of, 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 of a different uh, gender to themselves. Which didn't work at my primary school because it was a very small primary school. Like we literally had half a year six class. Like we yeah. had a five, six class and we had no plain year six class. So I think there was probably about 15 of us. Anyway, I always interacted with people of other sexes because my mate Heung and I are the reason why we both got straight A's. He did my maths, I did his English and handwriting. It was a fair <laughs> trade. <laughs> oh dear. Now we've got that, we go to piping. So yeah. um, we got a mixture of flooding and piping. Um, and Locke had a really cool idea too because, first mm. of all, his bench looked like mine would. You know, <laughs> very, very, very much like mine would. Uh, blueberry and chai cookies, lemon icing, inspired by William Morris, apparently the textile designer, not the talent agent. <laughs> yes. Very important distinction to be made there. It um, is. He even used a needle to feather, so he actually was sort of looked like he was actually quilting. <laughs> it's beautiful. Like I love. So some of my favourite painters are the pre-Raphaelites. Yes, and that's the same. Like um, like that's the era William Morris came from. Um, but there's a really good book if anyone's looking for it by Kate Forsyth, and I've forgotten the fucking name of it, but it basically um, looks at the, the artist models that the pre-Raphaelites used quite a lot. So, yeah. Um, but it was really good, because like, Luke was talking I'm about the fact the num- that... names, but yeah. yeah. That was, because Luke was, was talking about that. I um, love the look of his cookies. They were beautiful. Yes. Absolutely, di- absolutely divine. <laughs> they were... Raffalicious, pre-Raffalicious, pre-Raffalicious. <laughs> so, at this point, the pavilion went. I believe that's what they're going to do when they do a medieval song <laughs> for Beyonce. <laughs> so, at this point, the, the the pavilion went very quiet because everyone was suddenly. Art thou ready for this gelatine? <laughs> <laughs> Art thou ready for this gelatine? Yes. Um, everyone went quiet because they were focused on piping. Um, mm-hmm. But then they come back to Heather. Now, Heather was doing cocoa and clove um, cookies with espresso icing in a plum pattern. Yum. Now, the plum pattern was a tribute to Omar because she was talking about the fact that, you know, and they she lost everything when they relocated mm. uh, in, around World War Two and mm-hmm. had to restart again. And the plum tree was something that she used to sit under and she used to love the plum tree. Yeah. Then... We got the time call the van with the royal icing as a pain in, as a royal pain in your own hands. Hands. <laughs> I would also like to say here that we did refrain from doing an Oma Plums joke. We did, so thank you. <laughs> That's just in honour of your Oma. Although we didn't refrain from making the reference to it. No. Um, we need but... to acknowledge, we need to take our wins of not being... <laughs> <laughs> we, need to, we need to praise ourselves. <laughs> We're not we being... need to praise ourselves because we showed restraint. Anyway, <laughs> it's not, not something we do often. Um, yeah. Rania called Niv the, the tent mum at this point. Mm. Then went, no, actually, Heather's the tent mum. And Niv went, I'm the aunt. So my question is, who actually is everyone in the pavilion? Now, first of all... I uh, My vibe from Niv, though, is the cool cousin. Like, yeah. the cousin that you're kind of like, oh, my God, yeah, Niv, Niv coming. Yeah. I'm going to do this to impress Niv. Yes. Like, you know, like, yeah, Niv, I've got a new meditation space. You want to come check it out? Like, exactly. This, this um, will impress. I... Surely Kathy's the cool aunt. Kathy is the the crazy cool aunt. Like, yeah, she's the one that's gonna like like give you booze before you're eighteen. She's the one that's gonna tell you that you know about your parents and the shit they got up to yeah. when they were younger. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she's the one that's gonna be like, yeah, no worries. I'll take you to get your navel pierce, like your belly belly button pierce. We don't have to tell your parents. Like that's she'll take you quilting. You know all the crazy wild. <laughs> she'll stuff. take you out quilting. <laughs> get you a cup of tea. <laughs> 
Exactly. I think, look, I, I think it's, it is. Every, everyone sort of fits into a different family vibe somewhere mm-hmm. there. I mean... Andy is the oh, Andrew is the the cool uncle that will come the slightly nerdy cool uncle though. Yes. like I feel like he would expect good manners from you yes but would also like just tell a really like naughty joke he'd be hip with the cool kids <laughs> he would be totally hip he would be completely hip with the cool kids um yeah I'm I don't know I mean I th- I think there's 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 a wide I mean Camilla's like. Camilla's like the, 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 the second cousin who, when you get to hang out with her, it's an amazing time. But you don't get to see her that much. No, because she's always overseas doing yeah, something cool. she's always doing something cool. You're, she's, she's got the, the Instagram posts that you're always keeping an eye on. You're like, you show people, you go like, that's my cousin. Yes. Like, she is cool. Um, Can, I, Candace is like the, 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 the sister that's there 24-7 and you're really happy that she's there 24-7. Fuck yeah, because she would just have your back. Exactly. You'd be like, oh, I'm hungry. She's like, don't worry, I've made pancakes. It's all good. You know, Rania's, Rania's made himself clearly the child of the... the, 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 the <laughs> yeah, he's being looked after. He's been given Log, biscuits. Log is the, is the... Okay, so this is going to sound... Uh, he, okay, The middle brother? No. Okay. He's, the, he's the stepfather, but the stepfather you love. Oh, yeah. He's the stepfather who takes you to the cool art. Yes. Because he knows all about it. And he doesn't want you to call him dad. He's no. like, I'm not your dad. No. But I, I, you know, I'm here for you. If you exactly. He's the cool stepfather. Plus, I want to take you to this art exhibition and you're going to love it. It's just all vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll go have oh, a pizza afterwards that's... and have a chat about oh, it. Oh, the way that's your, that's your And you go cool and one. guess whose art exhibition it is? Arnie Cathy's. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move on. So... Um, now, Candace was writing love on many of her cookies, and unfortunately for her, it got more and more rushed as the time went on. <laughs> um, now, Kathy, what I loved, and again, this was something... Heather is the middle child. She's the middle sibling who's doing all the cool out there stuff, and, you know, we'll keep it together. She's the one... She, now, now, Heather's Heather's the eldest. Oh, Heather's, my gosh, yes. Heather's the eldest because she's the one who looks responsible but does a lot of really cool shit. Yeah. But just looks responsible. I think you and I both just want to be Heather because you're the eldest and I'm the middle child. Yeah, pretty much. So <laughs> I noticed something at the very end of this challenge. It was very yeah. sneaky. They ended the challenge and Kathy had two fans, one in each hand, and was just spinning around the benches to get the icing to dry. <laughs> this is a new technique. This is, this is this is Aunt Kathy just yes. spinning around. <laughs> She's right. so Kylie Minogue. Judging. So... Um, Andrew, they look like Italian tiles, but some cooking, some of the cookie flooding was a bit rough. Mm-hmm. Kyla was nervous, but the pa- the peppercorn helped to balance it out nicely. Yeah. Heather, over the top, but in a very good way. Cooked to perfection. The rich cocoa was really good. Yeah. Uh, Rainier, clever idea of the peacock. The icing that was very shiny was impressive, but it, it needed neater edging. Mm-hmm. And they said the tahini was rich and very good. They were amazed by the watercolour look on Kathy's. They said it looks ceramic. Mm. Um, it tastes exactly like tea, crumbly and buttery. Uh, Camilla, they, they could see the movement in the skirts and the and, the, and all the, the clothing. That's the one thing I loved. Like, and I, I know I've seen um, Instagram yeah. videos of that kind of dancing. It's gorgeous. It yeah. is. It's absolutely stunning. Um, Just year six kids standing around <laughs> awkwardly with the girls and the boys separated. <laughs> Heel and toe, heel and toe. No. Um, Camilla, they said that the Bruno spotted the icing slip that she had, and she's like, "Oh, it was the wind." And Bruno stopped and went, "That wind must have been strong, eh?" <laughs> nice work, Bruno. Blame the elements. Bruno was really. There's a bit later on we'll get to as well. Bruno was having a day. It's just um, a little Bruno sass. There was a lot of Bruno sass in this episode. Um, can, they said the cookie was crumbly though and crunchy. Um, Candace, They're going to change it to Bruno Cartoon. <laughs> Candace looked delicate. Kyla um, commented about the, the fact that love was written in different ways. She goes, well, I guess love changes over time. <laughs> exactly. Um, cookie needed more baking, but the flavour was good. Niv, it was a very creative idea, very nice texture, and pointed out that it was tropical. And she's like, oh, that's great, so not potpourri. So she, Niv was still <laughs> terrified that it was potpourri. Um, so look, uh, Kyla was very impressed with the Morris homage in particular. Um, the blueberry came through. Bruno called it exquisite. Yes. So that moves us on to the technical. Mm. Now, um, the technical, Bruno's clue was waste not, want not. What? I don't want to do the technical. (laughs) So I won't waste it. Yeah. Um, So it was a kaknakash, 
which mm-hmm. is a shortbread-like cookie, which is stuffed with dates and then crimped. Yes. Um, you needed to make 12. You had an hour and 30 minutes to do it. Now, this is Algerian in nature, but we've seen these sort of date rings. They're also very much Lebanese cuisine as yeah, well. Yeah, I've seen. Rania talked about the fact that he's had them, mm. obviously, before. Um, so they've, we, like, when we, there's a lot of Lebanese bakeries in miscellaneous city. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, they're, they're something that we see around a fair bit as well. Yeah. Um, didn't know that's what they were called, but it was good to see them. Mm-hmm. Um, now Candace hadn't heard of it, so drink. Um, a couple yep. of the other bakers hadn't heard of it. Drink. Keep drinking. <laughs> Rania had. Stop. Um, <laughs> now Bruno talked about the fact that this was like, he, when he was growing up in France, you know, cause they had Algerian heritage in there. They'd go mm-hmm. to the Algerian bakery and get a, a pile of these. Yeah. Um, now as they said, the dough is very oily and very crumbly. Mm-hmm. And you needed to pinch to get the pattern. And he said that's really hard to get the uniform nature. Mm-hmm. And basically suggested that because the dough, the dough was oily and crumbly, you weren't going to have much left over. So that's why they said waste not, want not. You literally uh, had uh, yes. just okay. enough dough to yes. just do. And we saw this with Niv, who <laughs> had weird sizes in the end because she was running out of dough. Yeah. Um. So... They didn't tell them how much orange blossom water to use. Now, that's cruel. But brilliant. It's brilliant, but cruel. Um, but as we know with Canadian, the Canadian baking show, it's the most the nicest show on TV until the technical. Their technicals are the meanest. Um, <laughs> so it really is the, the point where they've gone, you know what, we'll just be a little bit passive aggressive here. <laughs> Have some orange blossom. Use it. <laughs> so Alan turned around to Andrew and was like, you seem in good spirits right now, Andrew. And Andrew stopped and went... Yes, Alan, I'm in very good spirits right now. And then he looked at the camera, and for me, he was channeling his inner Ian Hecox yes. from Smosh. We Andrew, had this moment yeah. together, because I've gone, in my head, I'm like, oh my God, it's Ian Hecox. And you've gone, oh my God, Andrew's channeling Ian Hecox from Smosh. And I'm like, yeah, get out of my head. Yeah. And you're like, no, so, yeah, I and, like living there. Yeah, so he's, he's um, Ian Hecox's younger brother. There's or older 24-7 brother, fairy floss. So in my head, then they pitted the medjool dates, um, mm-hmm. and then they had to taste the, the the cinnamon and clove to get the balance right. Mm-hmm. Kathy's comment was, "Go big or go home." <laughs> um, or I mean, to be fair, in Bake Off, if you go big, you, you might go home. So um, then we got to maths again, and I'm getting more and more scared each week after the triangle fiasco last week. <laughs> um, this week they had to get the dough weighed out perfectly because it, obviously there's not a lot of dough. Yeah. Um, Locke mentioned that when counting students or on field trips or weights here, he counts in French. Um, <laughs> then we got a time call. The time call itself was a bit... Look, I hope that's because he speaks French and understands French. No, no, I like the idea that... I like the idea like, that Locke is just... It's like, it's like a cover. Yeah, He's, yes. you know, actually doesn't speak a word. <laughs> um, we got a time call. That, the time call itself was nothing. What I want to talk about is the fact that Anne managed to throw that date in the air and Alan caught it perfectly. And you could see the two of them were just stoked. Yes. Like, that wasn't a put on. That was like, I reckon they might have done that one first take. Mm-hmm. And just that got was, so, oh my God, we That did had it. the energy of first take. Yeah. Like, the energy, the vibes on that one, I, like, I look forward to we're finding like, okay, out. okay, we'll try this a few times yeah. see if we can get it. The energy and the vibe on that first one was he yeah. did it first time. Yeah. Um, and he had to move too. Like the, that throw oh, wasn't yeah. straight up. That throw was forward. He had to run for that one. Um, so this is where they realised that waste not meant the exact amount of mixture. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you saw this with Niv. She ran out of dough. So she had a couple of big ones and some really small ones <laughs> towards the end. Um, then they got to the crimping pit. Now, bit. now Rainier has watched his mum do this and it's like, it's not easy. It's really painful. Uh, everyone crimped. Except why? Because he just skipped a step step altogether. He he mistook it. That he thought it said crump. Yes. So he was just doing some crumping yeah. next to the bench. He's like, I don't know how this is going to help the bake. Yeah. Pop, pop, butter. pop, pop, yeah. pop, pop. Yeah, yeah. Um, they didn't give them the baking time. Um, now everyone, this was where the one of the cruelest pranks of all was played. Everyone's <laughs> looking in the oven, so drink. Um, and everyone was concerned they weren't browning. At which point, Anne's voiceover comes in. And says that they'll only blend brown on the bottom, they will stay pale at the top, and they really shouldn't be flipped. At which point you see a bunch of the bakers going, they're not browning, and start flipping, flipping the them. damn things. <laughs> or cranking the oven up, or going, I'm just going to keep baking these. And like, you know, Rainier is so proud when he pulls them out, because they're, they're toasted. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh look, it's dark like me. And 
So the judgment. Candice. There was some attempted crimping. Mm-hmm. The filling was good, but the dough needed more overall. Um, Kathy, they said they were inconsistent with the crimping, but the colour was right and the filling was nice. Mm. Ranier's were overbaked because they were brown, uh, but well crimped. Now, Kyla wanted more cinnamon and clove in there too. I felt bad for Ranier. I've seen these done and they're brown, not pale. So it was. Maybe it's an Algerian thing. Like Maybe. It could be like, you Possibly. Know, you... That might be the difference between the Lebanese ones and the, and the Algerian version, is one yeah. might be more baked than the other. I, I look forward to finding out. Yeah. Um, Heathers were consistent, but she clearly flipped them. Mm-hmm. Um, excellent ratio of filling, though. They, they thought the filling was spot on. Mm-hmm. Niv, they said something clearly went wrong, and as a result, the bake wouldn't be consistent because you've got different sized rings. Um, <laughs> no spice in any of them. They said the, the spice was almost non existent. Oh, no, Niv. Um, Your ancestors. Yes. Camilla. <laughs> I'm sorry, darling. Camilla, they said it was close to what we were asking, mm-hmm. but very heavy in terms of the look, but heavy on the orange blossom. Yep. Like they said, was consistent, no crimping. The filling was even and perfect. And Andrew, the crimping was there. The dough issues existed, though. They were very pale. The dough was a bit tight. Mm-hmm. So, Niv, Andrew, Ranier, Candice, Camilla, Kathy, Loke, and Heather. And Loke was told that if he'd crimped them, he would have come first. Whoa. Just now, crimped by an inch. <laughs> now we get to the table, oh, no. and they said, basically... We don't have any favourites at the moment, but we do know that um, Niv didn't do a very good job on the on the technical, but mm-hmm. Andrew and Ranier got special mention as they've been up a few times so far. Yeah. So you kind of got the feeling that if it was all a bit even going into the showstopper and coming out of it, Andrew and Ranier would probably be the ones that needed to save themselves. Yeah, like at this point, I I had maybe loped down because he'd second in the technical and his cookies were superb. Yeah. But... But there was a lot of people with with really strong cookies. Yeah, it's in the it's it's been a very even season so far. Yeah. Um, so the showstopper, mm. a cookie layer cake, four mm. layers and a combination of fillings, three and a half hours. Yes. Um, now Candace, Candace turns around and goes, "I don't know why no one's thought of doing this before." They immediately throw her under the bus by cutting to Kyla, who goes, "Cookie layer cakes is something we see all over the world." <laughs> I felt so bad. Poor Candace. She's like, yeah, I don't know why no one's thought of this. And then cut, cut to Kyla going, everyone does it. Because there's the, oh, is the, um, is it the Ukrainian wedding cake? The Kruntzer? Yes. Well, not the other, there's the no, Kruntzer Kake. The Kruntzer Kake. And yeah, there's quite a few number of Vicky based cakes. Yes. Yeah. But literally just the timing on that going, you know, <laughs> why don't people do this? Followed by Kyla going, everyone does it. It was a Morgan Freeman moment. It really was. <laughs> um, and they talked about the fact that flavour was important, but just mm. as important was structure. Yes. Um, because obviously then the, the because it's cookie and not cake, mm-hmm. the cookies are far more likely to um, crack mm-hmm. and far more likely as well to cave in, which is what we sort of saw with a couple of them. So we cut to Loke, um, <clears throat> who gets everyone drinking with a macaron charlotte. So, Lady Finger and Raspberry Mousse Centre with pistachio and chocolate macarons. Mm-hmm. Now, it was an interesting, it was an interesting concept. Yes, because the, the the Charlotte as a concept is always interesting, like the way it sits and the way it's sort of put yeah. into the mold. I, I do find George to be more of but a. Um, <laughs> but the idea of the macaron Charlotte, I couldn't work out how it was going to hold together. Yeah. And that was what ended up happening. And Kyla's like, it's really hard to slice this. And it's really hard to... Because mm. it's just like it, you cut into it and the whole thing like crumbles. Because mm. um, it's not like there's no layer structure. It's a sideways structure instead. Because the Charlotte from memory has the, the sponge fingers. Yeah, which, the, they, had, they had the lady fingers in there. The lady fingers. Then the macarons are out. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I think it was... I think it was... There was too much going on. Yeah, I think theoretically... It could have been pulled off, but I think it's one of those things you probably need to make it quite a few times to tweak it enough yep. to get it to work. Yeah. Um, now we cut to Kathy, <laughs> but this is all we get is Kathy goes, "I'm using squid ink." <laughs> then we cut. Yes. Okay. And you're like, right? I'm intrigued. Right. Tell okay. me more. Yes. But no. Instead, we go to Candace, who's making a trifle. Mm-hmm. Um, raspberry and peach shortbread Yum. And she's making her own custard oh, 
Oh, now, as she yeah. said, she liked trifle more than cake growing up, so she used to have trifle for her birthday rather, nice. than, rather than a birthday cake. I think I want a trifle for my birthday cake next year now. Okay, easy. That's perfect. Either that or something from the Australian Women's Children's Cookbook, as we perpetually say, because I'm a 43-year-old woman who can't let go of her childhood. No, exactly. Um, but then we come back to Kathy. Yes. Who's making a quickle. A quick pickle with the carrots. And I'm looking going... Squid ink. Squid ink. Quickle. And a quick pickle with a K. And we find out it's savoury, all right? So yeah. we have... Black squid ink and white sesame Mm -hmm. and white miso with black sesame cookies. Yum. We have wasabi cream cheese. Mm -hmm. And we have the Gravelax cured salmon roses. Wow. And she cured the salmon. Fuck me. So this is something that she used to do with her father and she said that helps remind her of her father and that's the memory of her father that she has. But the fact that she... We talked about, you know, locals like, oh, maybe you've got too much going on. How fucked would it be, though, if you're a sick salmon and you saw someone with, like, selling cured salmon and you go up, you're like, oh, Ugh. I need help. And they kill you and then they throw salt on you. Like, that's pretty shit else. Yeah, but you taste delicious. <laughs> um, at this point, I go back to Loke, who's now po- piping over a hundred shells. And I'm just Fuck. like, dude, you've made a big misstep here. This mm. is not the smart decision. Camilla was also, however, making macarons. But she was only doing the macaron outer shell mm-hmm. to look like a berry. The inner, yeah. the inner was chocolate lace cookies, almond macaron, raspberry creme diplomat. Then Bruno, mm-hmm. I said Bruno had a day. Mm-hmm. He asked if the lace cookies are going to hold, and, Br- and Camilla goes, "Well, once the temp- tempered chocolate is on top." And Bruno goes, "If it's tempered, <laughs> yes." Well, 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 and yes. everyone went, "Bruno!" <laughs> I now, told you it was. It's, it's Bruno's cartoon at the moment because there's a lot of sass. Now, <laughs> it was Bruno's cartoon. You're very right. <laughs> and there's so, the episode title. Bruno's cartoon. So, yeah, it, look, I actually think it wasn't trying to be sassy. Um, I think the issue was more... Well, what we saw later on is everyone using bloody... um. Yeah, the, the spray. The, the spray to he keep was their bakes more, cold. When he was said, if it's tempered, I think it was more rewarding about the fact it was bloody hot. Yes. <laughs> Everyone was using the ice spray. Mm-hmm. Um, because everybody you saw, to jump ahead slightly, Yeah. everybody you saw making buttercream. Oh. The buttercream was just butter. Oh my gosh. There was, there was, wow. Just how the, how they got anything up. I'm just amazed. So I think, look, I think, again, he was trying to give weather advice. Yeah. However, mm. it was, as you said, Bruno's cartoon. Yes. <laughs> um, so Andrew was making a jumbo carrot. Mm-hmm. Now, we say a jumbo carrot, the outline looked like a foot. Um, <laughs> and everyone was like, oh, look, Andrew's making his foot cookie. <laughs> and he's like, I promise you it's a carrot. <laughs> look. I, I'm glad it looked like a foot and it didn't go penile. Like, we've seen so many things in, in Bake Off. We have off. seen so many things in Bake Off history that... And look, all Weren't you need to, to do... Be. Go back to, if you're really unsure about that, go back to last season's Great Canadian Baking Show and one particular particular technical that nobody saw. <laughs> wow. I that mean, was that was the Volvers. Volvo. That was yeah. the Volvers. And yeah, this show's got a history. Now, so Now, okay... We've been talking about the different kind of cool weeks that they can throw in. Go Nad Week. There you go. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to Baking be just... with? Yeah. <laughs> Either or. I mean, you can Rocky use... Rocky Mountain Oysters. Yeah. Um. Use Rocky Mountain Oysters. You can use flower stamens and pollen. I mean, that's technic- they're technically gonads. Go Nad Week. Yeah. Oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> anyway, look out for Gonad Week coming out near a Bake Off near you. And this is why they'll never let me be a producer. This is why you're not executive producing. <laughs> yeah. um, so Aaron, Andrew went with a carrot cookie, a coconut cookie, a pineapple jam, and a brown sugar buttercream. Mm-hmm. Um, now Heather, with my favourite line of the episode of, I'm giving them little tin foil hats to protect them from conspiracy theories and browning. Um... <laughs> 
they get a lot of protection from a lot of things. Um, you know, look, Major League Baseball is the leading conspiracy theor- theorist of all. You know, do you want to know the deep dark secret or do you want me to sock some dingers? Dingers, <laughs> dingers, <laughs> dingers. Um, now, Heather's mother ha- mother-in-law has grape vines. Mm. And they make the, she heard it through. Well, they make the best grape jelly, apparently. Now, the mm. bottle that was there was entitled mm. Heather's Grape Juice, Spring 2022. Oof. Heather, was that just grape juice? Or was that the the vino version of, of, of grape, grape juice? juice like... um, and if it was the latter, mm. does this vineyard mm. deliver? Grape cider. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes, the grape cider. cider. Let's go with that, shall we? Um, now, this was basically referred to, this challenge, this um, bake was referred to as midnight snack. Yes. Peanut butter cookie, grape jelly, tempered chocolate tree. Mm-hmm. And she was talking about the fact that her garden is full of night blooming flowers. Because of course it is. Night blooming flowers, edible flowers, mm-hmm. places to hide in case the apocalypse comes. <laughs> yes. And different kinds of places too. You know, like, is it environmental? Is it a nuclear? Is it a zombie? Depending on where you'll hide. Will you be in the tempered chocolate tree? Will you be... I'm rolling around in the blood. I mean, we'll grape come, jelly. We'll come with the grape jelly. <laughs> so, at this point in time, it's like a wonderful, beautiful bake where mm. you're sitting outside having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which we don't yeah. have here because we, we call it jam. Anyway. It just needed a little figure of Florence Pugh sitting under it, covered in flowers. We'll get to that. So, phrases you only hear from bakers in the Bake Off. Yes. Kathy, I hope I don't run out of wasabi. Take that, Cake Boss. <laughs> you don't see that shit on Cake Boss. You know, when they're running out of vanilla buttercream or, you know, Rice Krispies. Or um, slab cake. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little slab cake, exactly. You don't get a, I hope I don't run out of wasabi. Yeah. I really need the wasabi. <laughs> um, now, Ranier mentions that he hates measurements, which is a really interesting time for a baker to mention that. <laughs> um, He's just been winging it. Cho- well, it was kind of probably, it was actually kind of his problem. So, mm-hmm. chocolate cookies, cherry jam, and Marcona almond meringue um, mm-hmm. covered in what I refer to as a rice paper gown. Yep. It wasn't a collar, it was a gown. Um, Rania says, now, now she's, they're talking about the, um, the Marcona um, almonds. She's like the cousin of a regular almond, but she's richer. And Alan's like, oh yeah, this one went to Yale. Um, <laughs> Now, the issue with that whole I don't like measurements thing was every time he cut back to Ranier and he was making the buttercream that he spun to when the first bun didn't work, the meringue didn't work, he's like, mm-hmm. needs more salt. Yeah. Needs more salt. Needs more salt. And the bit of feedback he got at the end was, that cream's way salty. <laughs> um, come back to Kathy for things you want to hear at Kathy's bench. Yes. Ah, smell the sea. <laughs> It just she's just been sitting there drinking rum and singing sea shanties. By the end of the episode, there's a peg leg, there's a, a hook, there's a seagull, <laughs> um, just a, a random first mate hanging out, <laughs> raising a jib. Now, now, Luke was walking wa- the plank, <laughs> swashling the box. <laughs> now, Luke, Luke was swashbuckling, yes, yeah, swashling the box. <laughs> Luke wasn't happy with his macarons. Um, mm-hmm. Everyone was at this point using the ice spray because it was boiling hot. Niv then talked about her retirement orchard. Yeah. Um, apple pie filling, um, hojicha uh, maple cookie, and cowboy cookies. Mm-hmm. Now, the cowboy cookies, they went, what are cowboy cookies? I'm like, I know what cowboy cookies are because I have B. Dylan Hollis's cookbook. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the things in the in the cookbook is cowboy cookies, which is basically the equivalent. You get all the sort of baking things and mash them together and make, makes a cookie. Um, now, the hojicha was walking that very fine line. Mm-hmm. Because it's a green tea. It's not much of it. So, the difference. The difference. I looked it up because I wanted to see. Matcha is made by stone grinding flat dried tea leaves right. into fine green powder. Yes. Hojicha is made by slowly roasting tight rolled tea leaves, stems, stalks, or twigs. So the process is different. <laughs> but this is the length I go to. <laughs> to ensure it's not much. To ensure that I'm not chastising oh people for the God. wrong thing. <laughs> But now we've all learned something. We have. Both the process of hojicha and how to spot someone making matcha from a mile away so we can stop them. Stop them now. Stop them now. Stop them. If you see your neighbour doing that, stop them. Stop them. Jump over the fence. 
Anyway. I feel like that's the only cultural genocide you will ever, like, endorse in your life. Matcha, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, not people, not no, anything. No, I, this... I don't even want the people dealt with. I just want the matcha dealt with. Um, <laughs> now we construct. Now, now, Kathy, ultimate instructional cucumber. <laughs> Genius! And she turns around to her and goes, you can stand on that, it won't compress. <laughs> no one tested it. No, no, thank God. Well, considering that she broke one of her cookies when she was moving it over, I'm know. glad they didn't. Yeah. Um, so, Loke realised that he's, at this point, that he's tried too much. At this point. Not at the point where he's <laughs> no, piping a no, hundred no. shells. <laughs> at this point, he goes, I might have done too much here. Um, so, Kathy then hid the broken cookie on the top, just piped over the top of it. Yeah. Um, at this point, Heather puts the jelly on her bake. And mm-hmm. the blood moon ritual is complete. <laughs> Look, we it's nice that they censored out the sacrifice. Like, I don't think that made for family <laughs> Did viewing. she make a little figure under the tree and that she, was sacrificed? Yeah, just like a little, I don't know, like a little goat. Little, <laughs> a, little, a little goat, but, the, but, but we're turning it on its head. Instead of the goat being the sacrifice... The goat is sacrificing. Yes. We don't know what. It's just a little goat holding a knife. Yep. Like, getting its own back. Yeah. Right. Big smile. Because like, it's Heather, so the, the bacon be like, smiling. Who's the scape now, bitches? <laughs> who's the scape <laughs> now? <laughs> okay. Renier goes, does it look rushed? Yes. Will it taste good? Hopefully. Um... Heather finished a tree at this point, and it looked like she was forging it. Like, it looked like a full industrial printer rather than anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, Locke asks for help. Nib comes sprinting over to sort of... Uh, sorry, Renny asks for help. Um, Nib comes over and helps out. Just as Kathy... The last shot of Kathy is her tweezing caviar into place. <laughs> yeah. As you would expect in a cookie cake challenge. Mm-hmm. The tweezing of caviar. <laughs> So, yes, yes. Judging. It makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, all of all of Kathy's bake made absolute sense. The funny part was, it was the one I was here for the most. Yeah, yeah. And it was fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. So, Niv, they said it looked enchanting and whimsical. The details were excellent. The cookies and the filling were balanced perfectly, and the cowboy cookie had a really nice chew. Um, <laughs> Andrew, they loved the clear definition with the. It had the such layers. a good chew. They had to put a spittoon next oh, to it. Oh, but get it because it's a cowboy cookie. And they, lo- they chewed tobacco. They loved the clear definition on Andrew's layers. You could see the clear definition. Uh, mm-hmm. The pipe at the top was outstanding, but they were worried that he'd done the little carrots on top and they got lost in the piping. Yes. Uh, the spice was really nice, but the buttercream was a bit waxy. Yeah, it just didn't flow. No. Heather, they were very happy that she got the tree done. The contrast of colours was absolutely spectacular. But they couldn't endorse the scaping. No, no escaping. <laughs> no, no scaping endorsement. <laughs> They were also, Kyle also made mention of the fact there was a lot of jelly down the bottom for the bottom layer of cookie. I mean, that might have just been about the bottom layer. It could have been a worry about the amount of sacrifice. Look, yeah, look, you, sacrifices of that nature are likely not very clean. You know, we get the, the sanitized version on TV. We do. Yeah. Um, they did say it tasted like a, pe- a pe- peanut butter and jelly, though, and they said mm-hmm. it had a good texture and the grape was perfect. Yeah. Um, Kathy, they were drawn to the gravel axe. And now the the baking gods are satiated for another year. <laughs> exactly. They were drawn to the gravel axe for Kathy. Great harvest. Um, cut very easily. Kyla, mm. we'll talk about harvest in a minute. <laughs> Kyla was happy dancing <laughs> after this one. Like, they cut Kathy's night. It cuts perfectly. Yeah. And then Kyla had a mouthful and there's a full happy dance going on. <laughs> they said it was a very bold choice, yeah. but it worked beautifully. Yeah. Um, Candace's looked like trifle, but mm. the piping was a bit rushed. The cookies were soft. It worked well, and I said it was almost perfect by being simple. Yep. Um, Camilla, the design was clever. The colour was good. The flavours were tasty, and they had a good crunch. Mm-hmm. Great texture, but unfortunately, the macarons were a bit chewy. Um, they said Loke's idea was... You only was... want a chewy cowboy cookie. You exactly. don't want a chewy macaron. Loke's idea, they said, was inventive, but the yep. macarons had issues. Um, they were very. It was a very hard to cut because it kept collapsing. Good flavour in the raspberry mousse. The flavours were great. They said mm. that the, the macarons just needed a little bit more time in the oven and mm. a little bit more time to sit, to harden. Mm-hmm. Um, Rainier, they love the presentation. Kyla wanted the inside to match the outside collar that he put on it. Uh, the piping was a bit messy, though, and the chocolate cookie had good texture, but the cream was way too salty. Yeah. It was a shame. You could just see it was neck and neck between yeah. him and Andrew at this point. But yeah. So... 
The Star Baker mm-hmm. was really tight. It was. I was. I, I was happy with the outcome, but I, you could see it going in a couple of different directions. I think it's a clear definition of how much they were impressed by Kathy going outside of the box and doing savoury in a cookie challenge. Yeah. And not only doing savoury. But doing it well. But yeah, just doing a magnificent job and the detail on every aspect of that was incredible. Mm-hmm. So she gets the star baker. And Randy, unfortunately, it's the end of the road for him. Um and look, he's he's had some he's had some really interesting. Again, I've loved his use of things like tahini. Um, yeah, he's, he's he's used really good flavors all the way across. And mm-hmm. I think, like we've talked about that with a lot of younger bakers on Bake Off mm-hmm. across different series, that this is a starting point. Yeah, and I think it gives him a really good platform to build future weeks for. So. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I mean, as I said, he can hold definitely hold his head high as well. It wasn't like it was a massive disaster week. Yeah. Um, everyone's been even across the board. Mm. So, yeah, I think it was it, it was such an enjoyable week. It was solid. You know, it, it's just good TV at the moment. It's just such a nice reprieve. It is very nice to have that. Yes. So the next week is Harvest Week. Ah, uh, get your sickles. So I look forward to hearing some Neil Young. Yes, um, I'm also that's... looking forward to hearing some. Some nice folk music about John Barleycorn and all that kind of stuff. And John Barleycorn and all of his friends. Yes. <laughs> so, until next time. Yes. Thank you, everyone, again. And I'm still Chris. And I'm still Christy. And we'll catch you all later. Ciao.